I hear riders, said Mama, and she ran for the door. But it was only Tio Luis and Tio Marco, Papa's older stepbrothers. Tio Luis was the bank president, and Tio Marco was the mayor of the town. Esperanza didn't care how important they were because she did not like them. They were serious and gloomy and always held their chins too high. Tio Luis was the eldest, and Tio Marco, who was a few years younger and not as smart, always followed his older brother's lead, like un burro, a donkey. Even though Tio Marco was the mayor, he did everything Tio Luis told him to do. They were both tall and skinny, with tiny mustaches and white beards on just the tips of their chins. Esperanza could tell that Mama didn't like them either, but she was always polite because they were Papa's family. Mama had even hosted parties for Tio Marco when he ran for mayor. Neither had ever married, and Papa said it was because they love money and power more than people. Esperanza thought it was because they looked like two underfed billy goats. Ramona, said Tio Luis, we may have bad news. One of un vaqueros brought this to us. He handed Mama Papa's silver belt buckle, the only one of its kind, engraved with the brand of the ranch. Mama's face whitened. She examined it, turning it over and over in her hand. It may mean nothing, she said. Then, ignoring them, she turned toward the window and began pacing again, still clutching the belt buckle. We will wait with you in your time of need, said Tia Luis. And as he passed Esperanza, he patted her shoulder and gave it a gentle squeeze. Esperanza stared at him. In her entire life, she couldn't remember him ever touching her. Her uncles were not like those of her friends. They never spoke to her, played, or even teased her. In fact, they acted as if she didn't exist at all. And for that reason, Tia Luis's sudden kindness made her shiver with fear for Papa. Abuelita and Hortensia began lighting candles and saying prayers for the men's safe return. Mama, with her arms hugging her chest, swayed back and forth at the window, never taking her eyes from the darkness. They tried to pass the time with small talk, but their words dwindled into silence. Every sound of the house seemed magnified, the clock ticking, someone coughing, the clink of a teacup. Esperanza struggled with her stitches. She tried to think about the fiesta and all the presents she would receive tomorrow. She tried to think of bouquets of roses and baskets of grapes on every table. She tried to think of Marisol and the other girls giggling and telling stories. But those thoughts would only stay in her mind for a moment before transforming into worry because she couldn't ignore the throbbing soreness in her thumb where the thorn had left its unlucky mark. It wasn't until the candelabra held nothing but short stubs of tallow that Mama finally said, I see a lantern. Someone is coming. They hurried into the courtyard and watched a distant light, a small beacon of hope swaying in the darkness. The wagon came into view. Alfonso held the reins and Miguel the lantern. When the wagon stopped, Esperanza could see a body in back, covered completely with a blanket. Where's Papa? She cried. Miguel hung his head. Alfonso didn't say a word, but the tears running down his round cheeks confirmed the worst. Mama fainted. Abuelita and Hortensia ran to her side. Esperanza felt her heart drop. A noise came from her mouth, and slowly her first breath of grief grew into a tormented cry. She fell to her knees and sank into a dark hole of despair and disbelief. Esperanza heard Papa and the others singing. They were outside her window, and their voices were clear and melodic. Before she was aware, she smiled because her first thought was that today was her birthday. I should get up and wave kisses to Papa. But when she opened her eyes, she realized she was in her parents' bed on Papa's side that still smelled like him. And the song had been in her dreams. Why hadn't she slept in her own room? Then the events of last night wrenched her mind into reality. Her smile faded, her chest tightened, and a heavy blanket of anguish smothered her smallest joy. 
Papa and his vaqueros have been ambushed and killed while mending a fence on the farthest reaches of the ranch. The bandits stole their boots, saddles, and horses. And they even took the beef jerky that Papa had hidden in his pockets for Esperanza. Esperanza got out of bed and wrapped Un Shal around her shoulders. The shawl felt heavier than usual. Was it the yarn? Or was it her heart weighing her down? She went downstairs and stood in La Sala, the large entry hall. The house was empty and silent. Where was everyone? Then she remembered that Abuelita and Alfonso were taking Mama to see the priest this morning. Before she could call for Hortensia, there was a knocking at the front door. Who is there? called Esperanza through the door. It is Senor Rodriguez. I have the papayas. Esperanza opened the door. Marisol's father stood before her, his hat in his hand. Beside him was a big box of papayas. Your, other, your father ordered these from me for the fiesta today. I tried to deliver them to the kitchen, but no one answered. She stared at the man who had known Papa since he was a boy. Then she looked at the green papayas ripening to yellow. She knew why Papa had ordered them. Papaya, coconut, and lime salad was Esperanza's favorite, and Hortensia made it every year on her birthday. Her face crumbled. Senor, she said, choking back tears. Have you not heard? My, my Papa is dead. Senor Rodriguez stared blankly, then said, Que paso, niña? What happened? She took a quivery breath. As she told the story, she watched the grief twist Senor Rodriguez's face and overtake him as he sat down on the patio bench, shaking his head. She felt as if she were in someone else's body, watching a sad scene, but unable to help. Hortensia walked out and put her arm around Esperanza. She nodded to Senor Rodriguez, then guided Esperanza back up the stairs to the bedroom. He ordered the pa papayas, sobbed Esperanza. I know, whispered Hortensia, sitting next to her on the bed and rocking her back and forth. I know. The rosaries, masses, and funeral lasted three days. People whom Esperanza had never seen before came to the ranch to pay their respects. They brought enough food to feed ten families every day, and so many flowers that the overwhelming fragrance gave them all headaches, and Hortensia finally put the bouquet outside. Marasol came with Senor and Senor Rodriguez several times. In front of the adults, Esperanza modeled Mama's refined manners, accepting Marisol's condolences. But as soon as they could, the two girls excused themselves and went to Esperanza's room, where they sat on her bed, held hands, and wept as one. The house was full of visitors and their polite murmurings during the day. Mama was cordial and attentive to everyone, as if entertaining them gave her a purpose. At night, though, the house emptied. The room seemed too big without Papa's voice to fill them, and the echoes of their footsteps deepened their sadness. Abuelita sat by Mama's bed every night and stroked her head until she slept. Then she would come around to the other side and do the same for Esperanza. But soon after, Esperanza often woke to Mama's soft crying, or Mama woke to hers. And then they held each other without letting go until morning. Esperanza avoided opening her birthday gifts. Every time she looked at the packages, they reminded her of the happy fiesta she was supposed to have. One morning, Papa, Mama finally insisted, saying, Papa would have wanted it. Abuelita handed Esperanza each gift, and Esperanza methodically opened them and laid them back on the table. A white purse for Sundays, with a rosary inside from Marisol. A rope of blue beads from Chita. The book, Don Quixote, from Abuelita. A beautiful embroidered dresser scarf from Mama for some day. Finally, she opened the box she knew was the doll. She couldn't help thinking that it was the last thing Papa would ever give her. Hands trembling, she lifted the lid and looked inside the box. The doll wore a fine white Batiste dress and a white lace mantilla over her black hair. Her porcelain face looked wistfully at Esperanza with enormous eyes. 
Oh, she looks like an angel, said Abuelita, taking her handkerchief from her sleeve and blotting her eyes. Mama said nothing, but reached out and touched the doll's face. Esperanza couldn't talk. Her heart felt so big and hurt that it crowded out her voice. She hugged the doll to her chest and walked out of the room, leaving all the other gifts behind.